Welcome back. The title of this mini lecture is Republican Rome, and we're going to talk about five things that as you read more about the history of the Roman world, it's good to be thinking about these terms uh, in order to start to begin to get a sense of the many complexities of the time period. So let's get into it. The first term that I would know about is what's called the struggle or conflict of the orders. So this is a process that happens really not long uh, after the monarch, after the king is thrown out, and you see the establishment of the republic uh, in around 509, 508, 509. And what you will see is a conflict between some of the, the main classes uh, within the city and within the Roman world. Uh, on one side, you have these elites who are referred to as the patricians, uh, and then you have sort of everybody else, you know, sort of the broader group of, uh, you know, kind of working and impoverished people that are referred to as the plebeians. Uh, and you'd had these sort of complex series of forms of representative government uh, that nominally tended to favor the patricians and disadvantage the plebeians with a real sense that if you were plebeian, there was no form of advancement and uh, your laws wouldn't be sort of adhered to and a, a near segregation. So one of the things that you're going to start to see is at times of crisis over the course of the next few hundred years um, is kind of the elevation of plebeians in some cases, the creation of new uh, governmental positions to really reflect the power and voice of the plebeians, the, the concept and, and creation of the tribune, of course, is, is a big deal here, uh, the role of, of being able to veto other legislation, so that by the time you get to about 287 BCE, uh, what you see is not complete parody, but at least a sense that, um, you know, plebeian law is going to be viewed differently, and there's, there is a sense of some parody uh, in terms of what plebeians can achieve vis-a-vis -vis what the patricians are achieving. And this is coming after the Constitution and sort of stuff like that. All right. Uh, our second term, Punic Wars. Punic Wars. So Rome fairly famously uh, in its early uh, decades uh, is, is pulling from numerous tribal communities around Latium. Uh, but by the time you get into the 200s and the 100s uh, BCE, uh, Rome is an expansionistic uh, state, and it is a state that is going to be fighting a series of military conflicts against the Carthaginian world. Uh, it fights three separate Punic Wars, uh, each against the Carthaginians, and it will eventually succeed in all three of them. Uh, now, some of these are going to be fought in parts of Sicily, modern North Africa, uh, and of course in parts of modern Spain as well, and within Italy itself, within modern Italy itself. Uh, by the time you get to the end of the Third Punic War, the ancient city of Carthage, uh, which was famous uh, for its harbor, uh, is essentially going to be destroyed. Now, this brings us to our, our third term. Uh, so this is the Senate, uh, and it's, it's good for us to mention Cicero here as well. Uh, so during Republican Rome, you know, Rome fairly famously, the Republic will eventually pass on and you will see the creation of a dictatorial imperial state. The Senate at this particular point is supposed to embody a, f a form of representative government, this idea of folks sort of coming into the Senate and advising these, these magistrates and advising the government, uh, and the idea that this is really a way kind of for the Roman public to be able to, to have a voice within their society. This is something that, although critiqued and difficult and cumbersome and complex, you know, sort of within its time, especially after the end of the Republic and especially during some of the early eras of the Renaissance, uh, you're going to see a real embrace of the principles of this time period as being a time period of, um, of, of, of great civic interest and great, great government. Uh, the writings of, of Cicero in particular, uh, especially in that early time of the Renaissance and the rise of the humanists, uh, is, is sort of looked at as, as really quite articulating, you know, kind of the ethics of this effectively. All right, that brings us to our fourth term, uh, and our fourth term is going to be Latifundia. So this is kind of a fancy way of saying plantations. So Rome was a fairly urban environment, but in the generations and generations and generations that go in the Republican period, one of the things that you're going to start to see, of course, is the decline of family farming ownership uh, and kind of the rise of these much larger villas 
uh, worked in many cases by enslaved or unfree people uh, and a process whereby those kinds of estates or plantations are going to come to define much of Roman rural life, uh, much of, you know, sort of modern Italy at the time, you know, it, it what will become modern Italy uh, and a number of other areas of the empire in terms of sort of local, communal or regional organization. Uh, so the lot of fundi are kind of central to understanding that. All right. Number five, Caesar. Caesar. So Julius Caesar really is kind of a central figure in kind of the decline of the Republic in that he takes power amidst the triumvirates. He eventually wages a war against a number of different Roman militaries, will eventually put himself into power uh, and be proclaimed, you know, sort of a dictator for life. But he's eventually murdered in the year 44. Uh, the aftermath of his murder... Uh, will lead to a civil war within Rome, which takes place between about 44 BCE all the way down to about 31 after the Battle of, of Actium, uh, where Octavian or later Augustus Caesar's forces are successful and Mark Antony's forces are defeated. And what really sort of comes of this is that, of course, uh, you know, Octavius is seen as sort of this protector of the Republic, protector of the Senate, defender of the, the people and sort of the citizenship here. But of course, what he's doing uh, is, you know, maintaining those institutions in name only, but operating obviously functionally uh, as a, a powerful, powerful dictatorial figure, uh, really sort of ending uh, whatever autonomy, you know, those institutions had left. Thank you very much.